I'm afraid to be in an unfamiliar space after dark by myself. This is your body telling you you're not safe. Where does that where does that come from? Several years ago, like 15, 16 years ago, I had a break-in in my house and was attacked by a convicted rapist. Elizabeth, lead with that. What up, what up? This is John, the Dr. John Deloney Show. I'm so glad that you joined us. Man, it's good to see you. Good to hear from you. Pull up a seat at the bar, and we're going to hang out. We're going to figure out what's going on with your mental health, with your relationships, with your marriage, with your kids. Um, this is the greatest mental health, marriage, and pairing podcast that's ever existed. We talk about everything from education to policies to what's going on in your world, man. And so however I can help, give me a buzz at 1-844-693-3291. That's 1-844-693-3291. Or go to johndeloney.com slash ask, A-S-K. And you can fill out the little uh, internet form and hit send. And it goes to Jenna and she will uh, give you a buzz and get you on the show. Today is a special Thanksgiving gratitude episode. So hang in for the entire show. We got something really cool for you at the back end. But until we get there, let's go straight to the phones. Let's go to Mankato, Minnesota and talk to Edward. What's up, Edward? Just rocking on to the break of dawn, John. How are you? That's me too. Me too. Except it's like the middle <laughs> of the morning, but the party never stops. Snoop Dogg. What's up, man? I'm actually kidding. I've got two kids, so when they're sleeping, I'm sleeping. So. <laughs> right. And even when they're awake, <laughs> I'm sleeping. Uh, good for you, man. Um, so uh, the question comes up from uh, some lightning round questions you did about marriage. And the question was, how do you maintain intimacy with small kids at home? And, you know, you said, we don't. And if you've got two <laughs> kids, five and under, it's a sex-free zone for a long time. And I've got two kids under five. So one's five and the other one's two. Yes. Um, so, you know, I was, you know, you know I was kidding, right? For it. I was kidding. I, yes, okay. I know. Okay, yeah. good. All right, yep. good. Good, good, good. And then you went on to explain, you know, how you plan it and schedule it. Okay, cool. And so, um, you know, my wife and I, we have certain forms of intimacy that we, you know, holding hands and hugging and kissing. And, and we do that all in front of the kids. Um, to show what a husband and, and a wife looks like, you know, a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. So the question becomes, you know, how do we help our kids understand that those boundaries are for, for married couples and adults, um, you know, hugging your mom and your dad and your grand grandparents is okay. But say like your friends and your teacher, you don't just go up and give them a hug and a kiss. It's not it, that type of affection is for, um, certain people. Is, is that happening or are y'all worried about that happening? Um, so at daycare one time, our oldest had hugged and gave a kiss to another kid. Uh -huh. So that happened once. Okay. Um, and I, I, it hasn't happened otherwise, but it's a concern. Okay. I, I would not l lose a single ounce of sleep over that. Not for one second. There okay. tends to be a um, socialization that limits that. Um, occasionally, there are kids that are over affectionate, and um, it's as simple as hugs and kisses are for family members. Hugs and kisses are for very, very close friends, and we ask permission. So, something s s like low level is. Not always, but occasionally, my wife will say, can I have a morning hug? I always ask my daughter for permission to give her a hug. Um, and I'm trying to teach her that she's in control of her body. Um, if my wife and I do hug in the morning in front of the kid, it's like a big demonstrative thing. But I also want to caution you against this. Don't use each other as a chalkboard. Meaning... Hug your wife because you love, love your wife. Ask your wife, um, like, can I have a hug? Um, can I give you a big kiss? Like, do that because you want to kiss your wife, not because you want to demonstrate what a healthy marriage is. If you truly and deeply engage in acts of intimacy, both behind closed doors and in front of closed doors with your spouse, that comes, the lesson comes through. But when you make each other an object lesson, 
it really can get wonky quick because you start wondering why someone's doing something or are they doing it on purpose? You know, you see what I'm saying? It starts getting messy. And so yeah. I would lean directly into that. I, I wouldn't worry about that one second. I, I, okay. I don't, I'm making the data up here, but I would say 95% of kids um, are going to hug each other. They're going to hold hands. They're going to um, be close with one another. They're going to bang and bonk into each other because they're trying to establish space in relational space. And that's, that is why I like school. That's, uh, there's some socialization there. This is appropriate here, not appropriate here. Um, but on the whole, most kids understand they, they have a innate sense of safety with their home crew that makes hugs and other things more okay than in other places. Um, and then occasionally I've had to have conversations with my kids. I worked with one family, um, and, their son was big for his age and he was um, like always ending up playing with younger kids. And then they had built a huge like fort, like a fort on, on one of the kids' beds at a, at a neighbor's house. And the neighbor had like three young girls. And so they didn't know how to have the conversation with this younger boy. I think he was nine or 10. Hey, it's inappropriate for you to be under the covers with three little girls. And he, he simply couldn't understand it. He, and it wasn't even in his head. And so we had to talk about appropriate, right? It's not appropriate right. with other people's kids. So that was just a simple, we, we, they called me and I walked them through how to have that conversation. It ended up being hard, harder than they thought, but, but overall simple, just address the behavior as it happens. Okay. Sure. Um, are you, you're, you're, you're not, this is all, you're just worried about this happening down the road. Kind of. Yeah. And I guess one instance was we were out front in our yard, you know, watering flowers or something. And a nice little old lady walked by and, and as she was passing, the boys are just like, I want to go give her a hug. So they ran up to her and, and gave her a hug and stuff. And I was like, okay, that was, it it, it was really sweet, but also it's like, okay, well, who, who are they always going to want to give hugs to and certain um, things like that. So that is, that's a, if you find your kids, like at a Walmart, giving hugs to tons of strangers. That's when you have a quiet conversation. This isn't an appropriate place. And you can point back to you. Um, mommy and daddy give each other hugs. Daddy hugs his friends at, 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 at work or daddy hugs his friends when they come over. My son sees me hug other men regularly. My son sees me hug my friends' wives and um, women that I'm close to and that I'm friends with. They don't see me kiss them, right? And so I can point back to me as a model for, I hug Mr. Todd and I hug Mr. John and I hug Mr. Nathan. I don't hug strange men at Walmart because I don't know them and I don't have that sort of, it's right. So these are, these are gentle teaching moments. Also, if they say, I want to go give that old woman a hug. All you have to say is make sure you ask her for for her permission. That's it. And let them go run and they can run on the street and she can say, no, thank you. Or she, she can have her entire world made because two little boys came and gave her a hug, right? Um, right. And so and that's what my wife had said is, is you don't know what kind of day she was having. That could have just made her whole day. I, I would be willing oh. to bet it did, but I do like the practice <laughs> of um, whenever I'm at book signings or I was just in Dallas for a huge event, thousands of people, people came up and they really quickly, like I'm signing their book and they really quickly – will say something heavy. Like I was thinking about suicide and I got your book and it helped. Or I was in a really abusive relationship and you're, you gave me the courage to step out. I'll often look at them and I'll say, can I give you a hug? I never hug somebody without, uh, especially a stranger without asking your permission. Can I give you a hug? Male, female, I don't care who. Um, police officer to an elderly grandma, right? I asked the permission and I think that's a great thing to model for your sons. What we don't want to do sure. is I don't want to take away that inclination for hugging, for human connection, human touch. I don't want that to be registered in their little minds as bad or as avo- something to avoid. I think that that's one of the things in our culture that's killing us. I, I, I may have talked about this on the show. I, one of the places I worked years ago during the HR onboarding process, they recommended the air high five. And I was like, What? And there was like 50 of us in this, in this onboarding meeting. And they said, 
yeah, if if one of your colleagues does something great, gets a huge grant or gets a publication, we recommend the air high five to avoid confusion. And I was like, what kind of confusion? And they said, just, we want to avoid unwanted touch. And I was like, man, there are some creepers who have just blown it for everybody. And what we've created is a completely touch-free society. And I don't think that's ever existed before. And there are people who abuse touch, right? That's look, Go back and read the Me Too transcripts, man, of bosses who slap people on the butt or who hug too much or grope a little. Like, so it's disgusting. So we got to strike a balance. We got to teach our kids. A, modeling is the best. But B, um, I don't want them to learn that touch is bad. I want them to, to learn there's an appropriate touch and there's a welcome touch and there's an unwelcome touch, right? I don't think you're anywhere near that right now. I think with just okay. one or two sentences, um, one or two, go up, make sure you ask, is it okay for, to give you a hug? Man, what a great gift you're teaching your sons, which is they know that their touch to that old woman is therapeutic and healing and life-giving, and they ask for consent, which I think is important. Sure. Is and we fair? haven't been doing, I guess, the, the, yeah. And we haven't been doing the ask for consent, but usually like when we say goodbye to, let's say a grandparent or something, we say, do you want to go give so-and-so a hug? And then they, yes, and go run up and give a hug. So yeah, I, um, hey, I, we'll let make me, sure to- Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. That's huge. Um, <laughs> I really am grossed out when a grandpa's like, come give me a kiss. And she, the, the granddaughter says, no, thank you. You're not going to kiss your granddad? Nope. Like, and I, good for you. Do you, asking your children, do you want to go give granddad a hug? Do you want to give grandma a hug before she goes? Um, I'm going to give grandma a hug. Do you want to come with me? I think that's phenomenal because you're letting the kid have body autonomy and you're letting them have it and um, letting them take ownership of their body and they're watching you do it. Good for you, man. You're right on track, brother. All right. Yeah, way to go, man. Um, parents, hug your sons, hug your daughters and invite them into that. And a little vocalization doesn't hurt. Um, it, it's welcoming. Hey, hun, can I give you a big hug this morning? Um, I, th I think that's a gift to your kids. Um, and teaching them about consent is awesome. Good for you. Good for you. Hey, we'll be right back. Deloney here, and I've got a word from this episode's sponsor, BetterHelp. Let's all be honest. Life would be way easier if it came with a user manual. Marriage, parenting, work, making friends, especially as adults, but this is the truth, my friends. There's no step-by-step -step guide. You have to take ownership of your life. And when it feels like too much or you feel stuck or overwhelmed, it's too easy to get lost in the anxiety black hole. I've been there. But you can learn to navigate this beautiful chaos we call life in a healthy way. Therapy gives you the tools to do just that. And that's why I love BetterHelp. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, even live chat sessions with your therapist. There's no waiting rooms, no traffic, no endlessly searching for the right therapist that happens to not take your insurance. Listen, BetterHelp has connected more than 3 million people with licensed therapists, and they can match you with a therapist in under 48 hours. So don't settle for feeling stuck. Visit betterhelp.com slash Deloney today to learn more and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash Deloney. All right, we are back. Let's go to Elizabeth in Dallas, Texas. What's up, Elizabeth? Hey, Dr. Deloney. Thanks for taking my call. You got it. You doing well? I'm well. How about you? Very, very good. Very, very good. What's up? So I have sort of an embarrassing, silly problem, but... Hey, hey hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Have you met me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> whatever um, you're about to say, you're good. You are good. Okay. There's well, just a few million say, people listening. You are, you are, yeah, it's just it's between fine. us. It's just between us Don't kids. Don't worry about it. There you go. Yeah. All right. So what's up? <laughs> um, I basically, like, I'm afraid to be in an unfamiliar space um, after dark by myself, essentially. Like, so hotels, Airbnb, like, it can even be a friend's house. Okay. Like... Um, so like spending the night somewhere, like I can do it like in a hotel. I don't love it, but I can like force myself. Okay. Um, but like so, an so, actual house or something with more entry points. No, forget it. Okay. So 
number one, this isn't silly or weird. It's not common, but it's not weird. Okay. Um, <laughs> if you've, if you've listened to the show for any length of time, you'll know, I'll ask like pulling the thread on this. This is yeah. your body telling you you're not safe. Where does that, where does that come from? Well, so I kind of feel like, like, like a little kid in this fear, because I feel like I've always had it. Like you do when you're a kid, you're okay. afraid of the dark, you're yep. afraid to be alone. And I never outgrew it. But then, um, I'm sure obviously you saw the notes, but several years ago, like 15, 16 years ago, um, I had a break in, in my house and was attacked by, um, a convicted rapist essentially, which I'm Elizabeth fine. lead I with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but like, I feel like I've worked through that. Like, I feel like I went to counseling, uh -huh. like, like the issue was already there. And I guess that just compounded it, but I feel like it doesn't bother me. Like, I don't think about it. Like I could go take a jog outside at night, but if you put me inside of a house, that's when the fears come. And that's where like, the irrational, like, you know, did I check all the doors or, you know, can you get in that window? You know, whatever. Sure. Um, did your folks do that? No, not at all. Okay. Like we grew up in the country. I doubt the door was even locked half the time. And, ah, and that's okay. also the ironic thing. Like I could forget to lock my own door. And in a way that kind of makes me feel better because I know like, um, it's not so, ingrained, I guess, you know, like my own door would be, I mean, I might in the morning be like, whoops, forgot that, you know, okay. and I shouldn't have done that, but it's not so much like in my own space. But if you were to like go out of town and you would say, Hey, can you watch my dogs or whatever? I would gladly do so. But then like, if it involved going to your house at night, forget it. Okay. Like even if it's okay. just go in your house for 10 minutes, like I would have a panic attack and forget it. No, okay. I'd be out. <laughs> so is this <laughs> something that you noises. want to be different? Or is this something that you're willing to just make peace with? And there's not a right or wrong answer to this. I would like for it to be different because I would like to be able to, um, I won't say, I don't dread trips or, or things like that, but I, like I'm potentially taking a job that's going to require travel, which is uh, fine. That's okay. great. Okay. But I would like to not feel like I'm sleeping with one eye open or. You got it. You got it. So I, um, I'm writing a note here. So for some reason, and I don't even think it matters why this is just, I don't, I don't, I don't think it matters. Your body has identified unfamiliar places at night as a no go, mm -hmm. not safe. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's put a GPS pin in that. And every time you find yourself in that situation or leaning towards that situation, it sounds your alarms. Right. And mm -hmm. Because we're people and we have giant frontal lobes, we can spin our bodies up even thinking about going to a house at night, mm -hmm. right? And I bet you could tell me a story in about three minutes and your heart would start racing really fast. Just thinking about oh, it. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what a great gift we have, right? We don't even have to, have to do the scary thing. We can just think about it and make ourselves nuts. So here's the, the good news is you can go through your life and just kind of make your way around it. And that's fine. Right. And that's, that's essentially what I've done. I like, okay. I just avoid those situations <laughs> or but, you can heal from this and I've got good news and bad news. Good news is you can totally heal from this. Bad news is there's one way to heal and it is directly through the middle of this. I knew you were going to say that. That's the only way. Like that and so <laughs> your brain, your, your thinking brain has made peace. This happened. I, I went to counseling from the break-in, from the, um, the, the near traumatic rape. Like I, I made peace with all that. I'm not even, I don't even, when I think about it, my heart rate doesn't even get up. Yeah. But as, as, as Bessel van der Kolk says, your body's keeping the score. It does. Uh -huh. Okay. So, um, making peace with your past, healing from your past is a, has a thought component to it. I can think about this. I can think about the loss. I can think about the near break-in and I'm fine. And then there's another healing part that is much, much, much deeper, which is my body doesn't take off on me. My mm -hmm. body's at peace too. And that's the level of healing we're looking for here. Mm -hmm. So there's one way through it and that's to practice. And what that might look like is getting a couple of friends that you trust and saying, I need to go into your house and walk around for 15 minutes after dark with you not there. And I know that sounds crazy. And what you're going to do is you're going to walk in the front door 
and you are going to begin to feel your body. And here's what we're looking to do. Create a space, a gap, they call it. You're going to create a gap between, I think I'm going to die. Like my body yeah. is starting to react. Like there's somebody upstairs and this is all coming down on me. Yeah. And your consciousness, like, no, I'm not. I'm okay. This is Dan's house. This is Tim's house. This is Sue's house. This is, you know, Laura's apartment. And we're going yeah. to practice it. And you are literally going to walk in there and begin to feel it. And it may be that you're planning on doing this for 15 minutes and you can last three minutes the first time. Cool. Keep a little okay. log and write it down. And then you're going to go to a hotel and you are going to walk into the hotel and you're just going to stop for a second and feel what your body's doing. And all we're doing is connecting our thinking and our responding brains. We want our responding brain to know there's danger. Oh, she's still driving. Cool. We can turn the alarms off, guys. She knows what's up. That's it. Okay. Okay. And it's just going to take some time. <laughs> and by the way, I travel for a living. I still don't yeah. sleep super great in hotels. I track sure. my sleep with this sure. whoop strap. It lets me know you didn't get a good night's sleep. I just don't sleep well when I'm not at home. And I've made peace with that. That means yeah. if I'm going to function, if I'm going to get on stage in front of 5,000 people the next day, I have to have overly ate, eaten right. Every time I go to a hotel, the first thing I do, I don't even unpack. No, I unpack. I go straight to the gym and I get my head screwed on straight. I get my body screwed on straight before I do anything else, before I go to sound check, before I go to, I, I even fly into towns early for that reason, because I know the third, um, the third component of my wellness, one is nutrition, one is movement and the other is sleep. I know I'm not going to get the sleep part. I just know it. And I've made peace with it. I don't fight it. I don't get frustrated anymore. I don't go to war with it. Um, but that's just the way that's going to be. So you may never totally pass out in a hotel, but you can, <laughs> you can prop your feet up and watch TV, watch the office and enjoy life without yeah. your body rattling on you. Does that make sense? No, it does. But like the thought of that. I know. It gives me anxiety just that's, thinking about it. It absolutely does. Absolutely. And again, that's your body just trying to take care of you. Because while you've gone off and done your cute little counseling, Elizabeth, to forget all this stuff, <laughs> the body knows we could get murdered at any second, right? And yeah. here's this, the sucky part. You might. You might. But right. probably not. Right. And right. maybe, but probably not, is the sentence that gets me through everything. It could, but probably not. Maybe, right. but probably not. There could and be a... I, 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 I <laughs> All right, I'll just be honest with you. When I walk into my friend's house to feed their dogs at night, my heart starts racing about 200 beats a minute. Like, I <laughs> literally think I'm going to die. And I have to say, no, I'm not. Like, I'm smiling because you and I have a very similar phobia. Congratulations, we win. Um, <laughs> and it just is. It just is. And I've, I've made peace with it. And now I can go get my job done. I'm never going to enjoy it. I'm never going to love it. But I can go get, it, get, get done what I need to get done. Okay. Okay. So what are you going to do next? What's your first, first, first thing you're going to do? I don't know. Cause I don't really want to. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess, I mean, yeah, I guess I'll probably call a friend and <laughs> maybe spend some time in her house. I want you to call three friends and <laughs> here's, I want you to get weird about this. Okay. Call three friends and I want you to see if you can rotate for, um, every night for 30 days. Just for a few minutes at a time, right? Just <laughs> kind of, start with okay. start with five minutes. Start with three minutes. Hey, Laura, this is gonna. I'm gonna have the weirdest thing. I have this super phobia. I've never told you about it. it. Freaks me out. I'm about to take this new job. I talked to this knucklehead on a podcast, <laughs> and um, this guy that used to have a real job, and now he's a YouTuber, and he suggests I do this. Can I borrow your house for five minutes? I just need you to walk around yeah. the, the yard while I stand in your house. Yeah. I saw him on TikTok. It's fine. <laughs> there you go. Um, I talked to this TikTok sensation and uh, I, I need to make a lap upstairs and downstairs in your home with the lights off for five minutes. Ooh, okay. And I do want you to do that. Whether you, I want you to get a flashlight and I want you to walk into somebody's house and go up their stairs and go to the end of the hallway and then come down the stairs and then walk out. And by the way, if my friend did that, I would scare the bejesus out of them. I would hide and you know, expect your friends. If they're any friend cal caliber at all, they'll do this. Um, 
but we're oh, just going to teach our bodies. We're all right. We can do hard stuff. <laughs> I'm glad we're not friends, John. <laughs> <laughs> you know how often I hear that? Um, but hey, uh, it's practice, 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 practice. The only true healing from anxiety is directly through the middle of it. Got to get connected. You got to show your body you're not, I mean, that you're not in danger, that you're safe. You have to show your body that, hey, I'm driving. And you got to have other people that you can talk to about this. Take the stigma away from it. Take the shame away from it. Take the secrecy away from it. Hey, I've got this crazy phobia, this wackadoo phobia. I don't like spiders. I have a phobia that every time I see a snake, my body literally wants to vomit and diarrhea at the same time. It's like, everybody out. Like everything wants to leave my body at once. And I got to heal from that. So for 15 minutes, can I come over and, you know, if you got a boa constrictor, can I just look at it? through a glass and then I'm going to get closer. I'm going to get closer. It's just called exposure therapy is what it is. And if you can do it safely, go for it. But I think you go spend five minutes in your friend's house. Then we turn on the lights on, you breathe and you go, I made it. I made it. And then when you go out to the car, sit in your car for a second and just feel it. I made it. I did it. I can do hard stuff. And then tomorrow we're going to do this again. And then hopefully after 30 days, there is a significant reduction in, you know, I won't go down the parasympathetic and sympathetic, I, but your body will stop taking off on you and you can whew, take this new job and go make some money and enjoy your life. We'll be right back. It seems like everybody's talking about how crazy the housing market is right now and how powerless home buyers feel. Mix that with the stress of moving and life change and job change. And you've got a tornado of anxiety fueling one of the biggest purchases you'll ever ever make. This is not a good idea. So if you're a new home buyer right now, my advice to you is to focus on what you can control, like the people you choose to help you in the home buying process. You need folks like my friends at Churchill Mortgage. Churchill is a Ramsey trusted provider that's been helping people with their home mortgages for decades. And their home buyer edge program will help you skip a bunch of the stress. Here's how it works. Apply to become a Churchill certified home buyer and cap your interest rate for 90 days. Then you'll get a $5,000 seller guarantee to help your offer stand out. So go ahead, take a deep breath because Churchill has your back. Check them out at churchillmortgage.com slash Deloney and get the home buyer edge today. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591. NMLSconsumeraccess.org. Equal housing lender. 1749 Mallory Lane, Suite 100. Brentwood, Tennessee 37027. Programs are for select loan types only and are not available in all states or locations. All right, we are back and it's the Thanksgiving episode. The gratitude where we stop for a second and just say, I'm so grateful. Even if I'm grateful for just little bitty things, because everything has been a dumpster fire this past year, or I'm really struggling because I had a picture of what Thanksgiving was going to look like. Um, Thanksgiving's in a day, right, Kelly? It, it's, yeah, yes, we're recording this episode tomorrow. early, but Thanksgiving's tomorrow. I sure thought I wasn't going to be at my in-laws yet again, or I sure thought that my whole family is going to be here, or I sure thought that my son was coming home from college or that my daughter was going to be out from deployment, whatever it is. It's a season when we stop and we just say, despite what's happening or um, in addition to what's happening, I'm grateful. I'm going to own it for a second. You've heard me talk about this, especially in the past. I haven't talked about it as much recently and I need to, I need to be more um, vocal about it. Gratitude, a practice of gratitude, minute by minute, hour by hour, a daily gratitude practice, an orientation towards life towards saying, okay, I didn't want this to happen. I didn't expect this to happen. I'm going to, whether right now or in two years, I'm going to find <sighs> gratitude. I'm going to say thank you. Um, whether it's to the firefighters who showed up when my house burned to the ground, whether it was to the people who stood by me when my loved one passed away, whether it was um, my wife isn't doing so well, but I'm so grateful that your wife's cancer is healed, right? What, I'm going to have an orientation towards finding beauty, finding gratitude. Gratitude is one of the most important psychological tenets for a well life. What does that mean? That's gobbledygook for if you are not grateful, if you don't have a regular gratitude practice where you stop and feel grateful, you are choosing to die early. 
you're choosing a miserable existence. And I would suggest why? Why waste your life? Why? So there's, I, I, I wrote down four ways. I've heard it in the, in the scientific literature and um, in kind of the popular Instagrammy literature, which is not really literature. I take that back. In the popular Instagrammy influencery nonsense. Um, here's four ways you can um, express gratitude, have a gratitude practice. One is just, you hear this all the time, write three to five things every day that you're grateful for. Keep a journal, right? Just have a journal that you write them in, things that you're grateful for. I am grateful for, I'm grateful for, I am grateful for. Just do that every day. You can do it in the morning. You can do it before you go to bed. Um, you can also watch somebody do great things for somebody else. So you can um, watch a video of somebody doing something kind for somebody else. You can listen to a story where somebody explains, and then this guy came and helped me out. She showed up. This person pulled over on the side of the road and helped me out when I had a flat tire. You can be in that story. A third way is you can write a letter to somebody. Um, I think this is... I forgot... Uh, I forgot the, uh, I need to find it. I'll put it in the show notes. Um, he's a psychologist at Harvard, a psychology professor who recommends to his students, um, one of the only ways you can achieve happiness instantaneously, you can turn the dial is to write a letter of gratitude to somebody and then visit with them either by phone or in person and, um, write and, and read it to them. Let them know. Hey, I wrote you this letter. Um, in all honesty, I've only been able to do that once. And that was to my son. Um, it's very hard to do, to write a letter of gratitude to your mom or to your dad. Um, I was with some guys this weekend on a, on a hunting trip. And one of the guys is going to do this for his father. Um, all the, his father's got, is, is, is working through some significant medical issues. And so they all wrote letters that they're going to read. And he had to stop the conversation because it was, he got choked up just thinking about what he's going to do. Right. So it's very hard to do that, but there's some significant psychological healing that happens with that. And then there's another one that that's, um, that I got from Andrew Huberman, which I think is phenomenal. And I've had some great success with it. And it's, it's almost a meditative gratitude where I'll turn the lights off in my basement and I'll sit down in my normal gratitude position, if you will, sitting down with my legs out or legs folded and my back up and I close my eyes and I remember a moment that I am truly grateful for. When my dad hugged me after a thing, when my mom put her hands on my face and said she was proud of me, when my wife filled in the blank, when my son, daughter filled in the blank, when I got a job and I didn't think I was going to get it, I put myself back in that moment and it takes, it can take 60 seconds. It can take three or four minutes, but I'm going to, the best I can, re-experience that moment of gratitude. That moment when I'm so grateful. Thank you for showing up in my life. Thank you for being there when I needed you. Thank you for sitting with me when I was grieving. Thank you for holding my hand through this ugly mess. Thank you for saying yes when I asked you to marry me. All these, right, these moments of gratitude. Um, whatever it looks like for you, I challenge you from this day forward. Let's do this from this day until the new year. Every day, have a gratitude practice, whatever it looks like. Put, a, um, put something on your phone, set an alarm, and just say gratitude practice and remind yourself, oh, I got to take three minutes and write this thing down because Delaney said to, re to remember to be grateful. Just do it. And my promise is you will begin to shift how you see the world. It changes the glasses by which you filter and see the world, and it's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So very cool thing. Um, we reached out on social media, on the internets. And I asked the people who follow my Instagram account, um, what are some things you're grateful for? Would you be willing to share? And we got a bajillion responses. I was hoping for seven. We got a million. We got a bunch of people saying, I'm grateful for this. My dad showed up. My husband's awesome. My wife is amazing. My kids or whatever. Okay, so Kelly, how many people wrote in and told us who or what they're grateful for? We had 100 million trillion responses. Yes, I love John numbers. Actually, we had six. We had six responders, um, and four of them were pets. They were the children of you dog parents out there. It's not a thing. But hey, so um, we split these up, so y'all pick some of your favorite ones, and so let's go through the B-O-O-T-H and start over there with you, Jenna. 
Yes. So um, I've got three. I'm going to read here. Okay. Um, so first one comes from Traveling Cows with a K. Um, and they said, our IVF clinic, they helped us make our beautiful twin girls. So that's the first one. Um, the second one is the Adam Toy said, my wife for dealing with all my anxiety and health issues recently. And then the third one is from Ape Baldwin. I am thankful for my two brothers who have walked through the darkest nights with me. Oh, Hey, how cool is that? That, that? that Who is in the middle? The Adam Toy. The Adam Toy. My wife exacerbates my anxiety and pours gasoline on it. And his helps. That's so nice. That's so great. Okay, who's next? Ben? Uh, yeah, so I've got one here from... I got a few here. Uh, first one from Red C. Ardinals, not Cardinals, C. Ardinals, uh, says, my friend Jason, he helps me combat suicidal thoughts just by talking to me. Dang. Way to go, Jason. Jenny Jen 3 says, my fifth grade students this year, they're pushing me to apply so many different approaches to my teaching. <laughs> is, is, is that because they're so ridiculous and out of control that she's having to come up with new things? I love it. It's Good job, be. fifth grade it's students. Way to go. And then uh, last one I've got is, uh, really, really Riley says, couple that set aside comfort uh, slash privacy and let me stay with them for six months in college for free. Wow. So that's pretty baller. That's huge. Yes. Kelly? All right. So Miss Sarah Bell 2020. I didn't know you could feel thankful. Oh, this isn't yours. This is somebody else's. Okay, read theirs. Read theirs. Go ahead. I just hope that people know what I what I deal with. This is, this is my job. Well, they know what I deal with. So go ahead. <laughs> Miss <laughs> Sarah Bell 2020 said, my mother-in-law, she's a prayer warrior and I can talk to her about things I'm not comfortable talking to my mom about. She has always treated me like her own daughter. How many did we get people who were grateful for their in-laws? Is that the one? The one. The one. The one. <laughs> the one. Way to go, America. Yeah. Um, at Anton.fam said, my father and husband, who have not had to do with social media, are both incredibly supportive, loving men. And then at Classical Voice Coaching said, my high school choir director, his belief in me taught me how to believe in myself through my opera career. You don't hear the words opera and career together very often. That's fantastic, man. Nay, dog, what do you think? Stuzy Reezy says, I'm thankful for my sister. She just got sober and we are spending more time together. Very cool. Uh, of a working mom says, my mom takes the kids overnight every Friday night so my husband and I can have a date night. Whoa. That sounds incredible, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Laura Beth says, my neurologist, he saved my life and gave me an internship as a jump start into my career. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, the ones I've got are from Corey Coaster Music. Said my college junior varsity soccer coach set me on the right path and has checked in with me for the last 10 years. You know what? I love that when a teacher or a coach just reaches out. I, I've got students that I used to coach and teach and I try to reach out every once in a while. I, I just love it, man. I love seeing how people are successful and they got families and they got careers and jobs. It's just like my, it's my favorite thing in the world. I love it. Uh, Skelly9181 writes, my childhood best friend. No matter how far apart we've lived, she's always been a huge support system. And Mason dot Algier says, my dad, he's always lends an ear to hear wise counsel and is a rock to help keep me grounded. So rad. Hey, thanks to everybody for writing in. Um, we did. We have a, we had an overwhelming response. It was awesome. This is important. Just take a minute. Uh, Jenna, let's go through the booth real fast. Um, curveball. What's somebody, somebody or something you're grateful for? And besides me, we all know that that's going to be right, everybody's number course, one. So yeah. besides mm -hmm. the besides opportunity that. to work okay. with this stable, yes. stable guy. Keep going. Yep. Um, so I would say I'm very thankful for my mom um, for, and I know she's listening because she listens to the show now, um, for never giving up on me through the hardest seasons of my life and seeing the potential in myself that I could never see for myself at that time. Hmm. That's awesome. Benjamin? Uh, I'm going to say, as cliche as it is, I'm very thankful for my wife. Uh, we just had a lot of ups and downs this year. Uh, we bought a house. Then we had an injury and, and a layoff, and I just got hit by a car you know, uh, last week. You didn't get week. by a car. You got hit by a semi-truck, well, but True, cool. true. I was trying <laughs> to downplay cool. it, but uh, <laughs> but she's always been there for me and is super supportive and couldn't have gotten through everything without her. That's awesome. 
Um, mine would be my sister. Uh, my mom is in the last days of her life mm-hmm. um, due to Alzheimer's, and it's in Texas, so I'm not there. And my sister's having to deal with all that, and she's been going to the nursing home daily, making sure hospice is doing what they need to do, and just really caring for her and taking the brunt of that. And mm-hmm. I know how hard that is, and I very much appreciate that she's able to do that and that she does it with love. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then for me, I would say uh, I'm thankful for my daughter. Uh, two years ago, she was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer and was told that uh, she would have a 75 per chance of it coming back. And so far, she has beaten the odds. That's amazing. Good deal, man. Um, and I would say, hmm, I just get kind of overwhelmed with gratitude because my life is um, just sitting on the gifts and talents and love and care and forgiveness of so many people. Um, I would probably say I'm deeply grateful for Todd, Fat John, for Michael, you know, Kevin, for Trevor and Craig, for um, JP, Nate, Justin, these men in my life who aren't afraid. They're some of the few who aren't afraid to say, hey, that's that's not cool. That's not who you are. They're not afraid to say, hey, um, that joke's not funny. They're not afraid to say, I know you love your wife, but you need to treat her better. Um, they're men that hold me accountable. They also remind me to laugh deeply. They think I vote terribly. They think that some of my politics are stupid and my mental health advice is dumb and they don't <laughs> hesitate to let me know. They also will call and say, hey, um, I don't listen to your show, but I heard one call. That's what they always say. They don't listen, but then they do. And that call was really, you did a good job. You really helped that person. And so they're not afraid to say great job too. And so, um, I'm not who I am without my friends, Potts and Caleb and Ryan and Buddy and Tucker, the whole gang, man. I'm just so grateful for my friends. Um, and then I guess at the end of the day, my best friend on the planet, my wife, Sheila, just just people I can laugh with and be with and hang out with. And um, I can only kiss one of those. That's not true. I can kiss all my friends. It's cool. All right. Um, so don't forget. Don't forget. Be grateful. Make it a part of your life. Make it a practice. Make it a regular thing you do. Think for things. Think of moments, experience, friendships. Remember back to those times. If we all turn the dial to being more grateful, The whole world changes, and it starts with each one of us. We'll be right back. Hey, what's up? Now that my new book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, is out in the wild, we've been hearing reviews and feedback from readers, and wow, I'm so grateful. And one of the things I've been most excited about hearing is that this book is not just for people who are healing from terrible traumatic experience or other big scary things from their past. This book is for everyone in every walk of life. The single 30-year-old looking to sharpen their mind, the 25-year-old hoping to make new friends, the parent who's tired of seeing their kid's eyes glued to a screen, but who doesn't know how to re-enter their life, people coming out of abusive relationships, everyone. And this book isn't me talking at you. This book is me walking with you because I've been there too. To better understand and improve your mental, relational, and emotional health, please check out Own Your Past, Change Your Future at johndeloney.com today. That's johndeloney.com today. Whoo! That's what gratitude sounds like. That's what gratitude looks like. Choose gratitude. Choose to be grateful. Choose to find the moments amidst, amidst the fire and the smoke and the ugliness and the grittiness and the scraping and the raw, the hard parts of life. Choose to look for things you're grateful for. Choose to be grateful. And if you're really a gangster, choose to let people know you're grateful for them. Um, As we wrap up today's show, this Thanksgiving episode, be kind to each other tomorrow at Thanksgiving. Be kind. Don't talk about politics. Don't talk about COVID. Don't don't lecture your kids on how they can be raising your grandkids better. Just be cool. Just be kind. Enjoy each other's fellowship. Smile the the most as most as, as much as you can. Turn the screens off as much as you can. Just go play catch with a tennis ball. Do whatever you got to do. Be kind. Be connected to one another. Choose 
joy. Choose gratitude. Uh, the song of the day, It's I think it's the single most romantic song ever written. Like, And this is me being honest, 100%. Um, it's just such a beautiful song. And it's the song the songwriter is talking about how grateful he is for his wife. The song's by Billy Joel, and it's called She's Got a Way. And it goes like this. She's got a way about her, and I don't know what it is, but I know that I can't live without her. And she's got a way of pleasing, and I don't know what it is, but there doesn't have to be a reason anyway. She's got a smile that heals me, and I don't know why it is, but I have to laugh when she reveals me. And she's got a way of talking, and I don't know why it is, but it lifts me up when we're walking anywhere. And she comes to me when I'm feeling down, inspires me without a sound. She touches me, and I get turned around. She's got a smile that heals me, and I don't know why it is, but I have to laugh when she reveals me. Thank you all for being with us. Happy Thanksgiving. Stay in school. Don't do drugs. We'll see you soon.